last year, our next presenter was kind enough to uh, come to Spokane and uh, spend a weekend with us up at the Hayden Eagles Lodge in uh, Hayden, Idaho. And he presented uh, two presentations. One was on uh, Oregon, which uh, how many of you are familiar with Wilhelm Reich? Almost everybody. So it was a presentation on uh, uh, Oregon Energy, and then there was also another presentation on the ether. And he uh, showed a book, uh, which was uh, about the cosmic ether uh, existing, and it's a compilation, probably the most definitive compilation of experiments that actually show positive results that there absolutely is an ether. We had about 18 copies of uh, that book and also um, the Oregon Accumulator Handbook, which has been a classic that probably most of us in the room here have. Uh, but those books are also sold out. Um, but uh, uh, I just want to mention his website really quick is OregonLab.org. And through that website, uh, if you didn't get a chance to get a copy of those books today, you can get them through the website. Um, he has uh, been studying uh, the work of Wilhelm Reich for many, many, many years. And I was introduced to it maybe close to 20 years ago by getting my own copy of the Oregon Accumulator Handbook. And uh, it has been revised, and so um, if you have one of the older copies, I'd encourage you to get the newer copy, as well as the, uh, uh, the book on the ether. Uh, the first presentation is uh, Oregon Energy Experiments, uh, Proof of a Cosmic Life Energy, Part 2. And the ether uh, presentation is also going to be a, a Part 2 or an, ex or an extension to last year's presentations. Um, it's an uh, honor and a privilege to have them here with us this weekend. Please help me... Uh, Welcome, uh, Dr. James DeMio. Um, the layerings in, for making wall panels for an organ accumulator box. Again, you have the galvanized steel on the very interior and the, um, or whatever the, you can use iron and so on, but standard sheet metal, galvanized steel, like used for duct work. It's thin, it's not all that heavy. If you start using iron, plates, the thing gets too heavy to move around or more difficult to build. You use steel wool as the, for layerings, along with, in this case I show fiberglass, but sheep's wool is very good. <coughs> Excuse me. If, if you get my Oregon Accumulator Handbook, I go through all of the details on construction and how to use them in a safe and effective manner. And uh, here's a couple of pictures. Uh, this is a 20-ply organ accumulator, 20 layer, alternating layers with galvanized steel on the inside, and the outside is a Celotex, uh, not Celotex, it's a um, mason board, uh, which is painted with a um, bullseye natural shellac, which gives it a good high dielectric uh, quality uh, in addition to the mason board. This is one that was made by a professional uh, person. This is one that was made by me. I'm a roughshod carpenter. <laughs> but you can, they don't have to be pretty. They don't have to be looking nice. Uh, you cobble them together however you will, and they work. And uh, I ran this experiment many times, but the most systematic set, I would do it with the electroscope uh, inside the organ accumulator with the door open and then sitting about a meter away is a cardboard box of the same interior shape with the, the top of the boxes open. Uh, and, and, there, and what I would do is put the electroscope in there and then run the experiment again. And then I would do it back and forth in pairs. And uh, the result of this experiment showed uh, as it was run over a couple of days in September of 2010, uh, under low humidity conditions, this is quite important, again, we're going to energy bound up by water. You make your, your, uh, uh, you make your experiments when humidity is lower, below 50%, you get the best results or better results. And uh, it showed a five-fold increase in the sequential electroscopic discharge times inside a, this 10-ply organ charger. Uh, the, Average accumulator times were, this is average uh, of the runs, 596.9 seconds. The average control runs, 122.6 seconds. This data also analyzed with a very high statistical probability of six 
uh, would be by chance alone six times out of a thousand. So here you can see the inside the accumulator. This is a strong 20-ply uh, charger box. Here you can see the accumulator uh, inside of it. It's metal walls and so on. Here you can see the electroscope with the photogate. Only used one photogate um, just to cut the beam. And the, here's a probe that measures temperature and humidity. Uh, and here's the one in the control box, cardboard box from Amazon, sitting on its side. It was selected because it has the same approximate dimensions on the interior, again with the box open, and that's how the control runs were made. Okay, here's the gravitor apparatus which I constructed. And uh, the device itself is over here in the corner. You'll get a better look at that as we go. Um, and it's mounted on a pivot here. You can see there's the upper pivot with some, some uh, brushes to transmit the electrical power. And down here is another set of brushes for the other polarity. These are on very delicate pivots with a counterweight at the other end. Yeah. By the way, the date here is um, December the 16th, 2019. Now here is the power supply, which is a high voltage set, which I uh, built with help from many people. And the way it works is we start off with a battery bank here. There's three 12 volt batteries, which feed a negative and a positive, the black and the red wires you just saw there. And it goes uh, into a flyback which then feeds into a, um, a diode and, and capacitor board, which builds the uh, relatively low high frequency uh, voltage of the flyback, which is about uh, 2,000, 3,000 volts. And it builds it up to about, in this case, about 90 to 100,000 volts. And, uh, and that's DC.